is on vibrate and if you need to take a call please leave the auditorium if you wish to address town meeting at any time this evening i ask you to approach one of these three microphones tell us your name tell us where you live here in westford we have three microphones and i will describe the person the purpose of each of them to you the middle microphone here is for questions for those of you for those looking for information here discussing the motion and you are opposed I ask you to please go to the opposed microphone, which is to my right and your left. And the one on my left and your right is for those who wish to speak in favor. Each of the microphones has a sign on it. Please address all questions to me, the moderator, and I will find the best person or persons to answer your, in your query. What this allows the moderator to do is to balance the debate so we can hear from someone in favor and someone opposed, and we can balance that, balance that discussion. If you absolutely can't make it to the appropriate microphone, that does not preclude you from speaking. Please go to the closest microphone to you. If you have any questions at any time, go to the center microphone and say, Madam Moderator, I have a question. That's the part of parliamentary law you need to know, and we will get your, an your question answered. In order to not take the meeting's time to read the motions verbatim, I would ask for a motion to accept the wording for the motions as printed on the salmon colored sheets and filed at the town clerk's office on October 13th, 2017, and to waive the reading by the moderator. You will not only have it in front of you, Mike Wells, Director of Technology, will project every motion verbatim on the screen behind me here so we know exactly where we are. Thank you. Do I have a motion to waive the meeting? Is there a second? Does anybody have any questions about why we're doing this? Hearing no questions, all in favor say aye. All opposed, say nay. Passes unanimously. Before we get into the financial discussions, we have members on the floor who are not voters from Westford. Town Council, Assistant Town Manager, various department heads, and for them to be able to address the meeting, our bylaws say that we must vote, and there needs to be a two-thirds majority to allow this. So I would ask for a motion to allow all staff who are non-voters of the town, as well as Town Council, and consultants hired by the town of Westford to sit in their respective committees and be able to address this meeting. May I have a motion? Aye. Is there a second? Yeah. Any questions? Okay, no questions or clarification for this motion to allow all staff and consultants who are not residents to be allowed to sit with their respective committees and address this meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay? Uh, this motion passes with a two-thirds majority. Are there any questions from the voters about protocol, procedure, or order? Hearing none, we move along. Article one. First of all, I'd like to say that this motion must pass by a nine-tenths majority, which means that even if one person votes no, we have to do a hand count. I have a motion under Article 1 is printed on the motion sheets. Is there a second? Okay. Uh, Jody, would you like to explain the article? And as you'll see in the salmon colored motion sheets, oh, Dan's going to do it. As you see in the salmon colored motion sheets, this motion has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee unanimous for both committees. So, Daniel Dahl, head charge uh, This is a bill of prior year. The top three items we have here are all from DG Solar, and so is the water enterprise. Like the working? Okay, we're working. So all those four are basically uh, a billing error that occurred with the previous uh, company with our net metering program. We do owe this money, and it dates back to June of 2015. Uh, the center item for People GIS for 3,500 is for the uh, the assessing map online. Uh, that we use, they never billed us last year, so we do owe this money. Is there any discussion? Excuse me. Hello. Is it on? Is it mic? I can't hear you. Is your microphone on? I don't know. Is, oh, wait, I think it is. I don't understand what this gentleman was just talking about. Article one on my page is talking about three hundred and nineteen dollars for a technology department, four hundred and. 
fourteen dollars for police and so forth. I don't understand the thirty five hundred dollars in water and all this other stuff. I'm confused. So these items here, they're actually unpaid electric bills that we owe money on, and these are the departments that those bills are for. The middle item is a, uh, a contract of service that we have for the technology department. Any other? Okay. Mr. Price? Our price right in the room. Dan, you, you, you didn't mention the, uh, the third part. There's some problem. The, uh, the third part is also a electricity bill for the water enterprise. <coughs> Any more discussion? A yes vote means you are in favor of approving all unpaid bills from the previous fiscal year or years. A no vote means you oppose the payment of all unpaid bills from the previous year or years. Seeing, is there any other further discussion? Oh, what's your name, please? I'm oh, sorry, George Murray, 14 Haywood Road. Thank you. I'm confused because on, on my salmon sheet, there are three items. None of them deal with water enterprise. Ah, so we're not voting on these individually. That, that's the entire. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing no other questions pertaining to the motion, I will call for the vote. This takes a nine-tenths vote, and if we do not have a unanimous vote, we will have to count by hand. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Article one has passed um, unanimously. Article two, I have a motion under article two is printed on the motion sheets. Is there a second or ask for Jody to explain it? Second. Good evening, Jody Ross, town manager. So this article is actually, oops, I left the article over there, but the first item is to pay for two meetings at the Board of Appeals. They pay for minutes, for an admin to do minutes, since so they have two additional meetings this year uh, due to the Chapter 40B uh, applications they have for apartments. The second one is we are proposing to put a full-time assistant building commissioner in the building permitting office. Right now we have one full-time building commissioner, Matt Hakala, and we have two part-time assistants, and this would create a full-time assistant, and we would keep on one of those part-timers part 14 and a half hours a week. So the difference in funding for this fiscal year is 21,413. And the Veterans Personal Services is to provide Terry Stater with a much needed four hour a week admin to help him with his office paperwork and benefit processing. The last one is to reduce the school budget by a million sixty. And if you remember at the Springtown meeting, we voted an override of 1.6 million, which then went to the ballot and was approved. And we have to fund that override entirely in the first year. So we explained to you at the March town meeting that we would phase that over three years so the impact would be over three years, not in the first year. So this will reduce the school budget by the two thirds. Then next year you would pay the, the other one third and the third year you will have the, the final payment for the 1.6 million. Thank you, Jody. Is there any discussion? You have a question? Yes. George Murray, 14 Haywood Road. It's a this is a policy question. Um, the building personal services for an assistant uh, building inspector, I don't really have a position one way or another whether that's a good thing to do or, to do or not. My concern is 
This is being raised at a special town meeting. And this is an item that's going to have ongoing budget impact forever. And those are the types of things that should be being dealt with, I believe, at an annual town meeting. And I'd like to know the rationale from town manager or the selectman or town councilor or whoever that determines what kinds of articles can be brought to a special town meeting as opposed to being held for discussion at an annual town meeting. There are several other articles on tonight's warrant that leave me with the same question. Why isn't this being dealt with at an annual I, I, one, one, one last thought. It's being dealt with at a special, and therefore any other department that has a need come budget cycle, they're going to be presented this as a fait accompli, and they don't have a chance to compete for those scarce dollars to say, well, we believe that our need is greater. Well, sorry, it's already there. The man's our person, man or woman, is already in the job, and it's an ongoing expense. And it doesn't seem to me that that's appropriate. Thank you. To answer your question, there are different categories of articles that can come to special town meeting. One of them is a time-sensitive nature. And I would like our Director of Land Use, Chris Clutchman, to speak as to why she feels this is a time-sensitive article. Thank you. Chris Clutchman, Director of Land Use Management. Um, in the building department, we are facing really kind of an unprecedented uh, level of activity. I've been here for coming on seven years now. Um, and frankly, just one person, one um, building commissioner can't do it all. We're facing um, uh, the 40B projects that you've heard about. Um, that's 420 apartments that'll be submitted um, shortly. Uh, we have uh, construction projects that are very complex, such as the renovation of the Abbott Mill, phase two. That's a, a very complicated um, set of processes. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, the building department has approved in the last fiscal year $41 million of value of permits. That's residential, you know, whether you're putting a deck on or it's a complete renovation of an office building. And just one person can't do it all, and we're facing really pretty severe stress. We think that the zoning enforcement officer position of 14 and a half hours a week is also very important at this time. And that is gonna help us enforce very complicated um, conditions of approval, such as the asphalt plant that should be coming online next year, as well as these other complicated projects. So we do feel that this is a time sensitive matter that should be addressed in fiscal year 18. Any other questions? As you see in your salmon colored motion sheets, the motion has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee. A yes vote means you are in favor of approving the fiscal year 2018 budget adjustments, and a no vote means you oppose the fiscal year 2018 budget adjustments. This is a majority vote. Seeing no other questions pertaining to the motion, I will call for the vote. This takes a majority vote to pass. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? It does. Motion passes, but not unanimously. Article three, approve fiscal year 2018 budget transfers. Jody, can you please? Um, I have a motion under Article 3 is printed in the motion sheets. Is there a second? Andrew, oh, and, Andrew will present here, yeah, sorry. Andrea Perrin is sweet chair of the Board of Selectmen. Um, when uh, Jody uh, did the budget last year due to uh, budgetary constraints, she cut out the $2,000 uh, for the uh, annual retreat now that we have been having for the last eight years. Um, the Board of Selectmen uh, asked her uh, to see if she could find funding to um, 
uh, put back into the budget for the retreat because we have found over the last eight years that um, it is uh, incredibly popular with all of you folks. Um, it's an opportunity for all of the boards uh, and the commissions and committees in town to hear from our residents as well as to present to you uh, what they've been doing over the past year. So um, as a result of some savings uh, in the personnel budget of the town clerk's office, uh, we were able to find the $2,000, so we are asking for the transfer of the $2,000 from the town uh, clerk's personnel uh, services budget into the Board of Selectmen expenses. Is there any discussion, any questions? Okay, yes vote means you're in favor of approving the fiscal year 2018 budget transfers. A no means you oppose the fiscal 2018 budget transfers. This, this motion uh, takes a majority vote. Seeing no other questions pertaining to the motion, I will call for the vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Okay. It did not pass unanimously. On to Article 4. Approve fiscal year 2018 capital appropriations. Capital Planning Committee. I have a motion under Article 4 is printed in the motions sheet. Is there a second? Okay, I'll ask uh, Chief Tar to speak. Fire Prevention car was a nine, excuse me, 2006 car that was the transmission went on it in August. That's why it's up for a special town meeting, not for the annual town meeting. Um, the cost of the transmission was about $7,000 plus any additional cost for it to repair. So 2,642,000 miles on it. It was up for scheduled replacement over the last couple of years through capital. It's been uh, looked over. Um, so this is going for a new car for uh, the fire prevention and the captains. I can also speak to the <coughs> emergency management repeater that was installed in 2001. Um, the amplifier's on on it. It's supposed to be transmitting 95 watts. It's currently transmitting 5 watts. So that's up for replacement also. Did you just, I'm sorry, did you describe both of them? Okay, thank you. Uh, next, uh, Bill Olson, please. Good evening, everyone. Bill Olson, school superintendent. Uh, the $19,375 is for uh, finishing the design fees for the replacement of the uh, rubber track surface at Westwood Academy. The track is about 20 years old. Uh, those of you who have had an opportunity to use it for recreation purposes, have noticed that it is delaminating in a number of spots with large holes. Uh, it is becoming a safety concern for us, and there will come a point, if it's not replaced, that uh, we will no longer be able to have track meets at the academy. So the 19375 is for the continuation of design documents and the bid process. Thank you. Chip Bassett, Barrett. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, the $22,000 um, is for a sander body for a dump truck. Um, the body that's on the existing truck um, is beyond repair. Um, these uh, defects in the body were realized after the warrant closed for the last town meeting, so we're asking for uh, the sander body to be added to the truck so we can get it through this, this year. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Jody. I have a picture of it. I don't know if it's handy, but one thing I wanted to mention is Chip drove this truck to the Capital Planning Committee to take a look at. Unfortunately, it broke down on the way back to the station, and he had to call for help, so it is in desperate need. Okay. 
As you can see in your salmon colored motion sheets, this motion has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and the Capital Planning Committee all unanimously. A yes vote means that you are in favor of approving the fiscal year 2018 capital appropriations. A no vote means you oppose the fiscal year 2018 capital appropriations. Uh, this takes a majority vote. See no other questions pertaining to the motion. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All who oppose, say nay. Is that unanimous? Okay, it's unanimous. Article 4 has passed unanimously. Article 5, amend the wage and classification plan. I have a motion under Article 5 as printed in the motion sheets. Is there a second? Um, Jody, would you please? Thank you, Madam Moderator. So this is our non-union wage and classification plan, and traditionally we have taken this to town meeting to be approved when we make changes. So you'll notice one is to create a non-union deputy police chief. We do have a union deputy police chief, Walter Shea. He is retiring in December, and the Board of Selectmen and I are negotiating with, or I'm negotiating with the uh, Westford Superior Officers Union to take this position out of the union because we do believe it is a management position and so that's we're bargaining that right now but if you approve this tonight you'll see on the left what the current band is in the union and what the new band recommendation is on the right I did go to the personnel advisory committee the selectmen and the finance committee who all recommend this article underneath that you'll see the parks and recreation director and probably most of you may know that Pat Savage just retired last Friday after 16 years with our town. A few years ago, I brought to town meeting to raise that to a band seven because she had grounds and cemetery under her authority. And I am removing cemetery, I have removed cemetery, and I'm in the process of removing grounds. So I wanted to bring that back down to a band six. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Is there any discussion? A yes vote means you are in favor of amending the wage and classification plan, and a no vote means you oppose amending the wage and classification plan. Seeing no questions pertaining to the motion, I will call for the vote. This takes a majority vote to pass. And all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. Okay, this motion passes, but not unanimously. Article 6, amend the revolving fund bylaw, chapter 138.1. I have a motion under Article 6 as printed in the motion sheets. Is there a second? Um, Chris Erickson want to come up and say something? Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris Erickson. I'm a volunteer member of the Recycling Commission and have been for about 10 years. I live at 41 Kyes Road. I'm going to take just a quick moment to explain what this is all about. 20 years ago, at a town meeting just like this, or maybe sort of like this, a revolving fund was established by town meeting to be used by the Recycling Commission and specifically stated by town meeting and in our bylaw uh, are, are certain stipulations of the source of revenue allowed to go into the fund and also what the fund could use, be used to pay for. The source of revenue allowed to go into the fund was sale of bins, that's all. And the allowed expenses to be paid from the fund was purchase of recycling supplies. Over the, the, over the years, things have changed, and the activities of the Recycling Commission have changed and expanded. We do more outreach, we do more education, we run more events. And now we're looking to update this verbiage to better reflect what we are using that revolving fund for now. We still sell bins, 
And yes, that money does go into this fund, but we have a few other sources of revenue now also. Covanta is the company that burns our trash for energy. And they send the town a quarterly recycled grant check, and that goes into the fund. New England clothes recycling has bins around town. You've probably seen them, you've probably put your clothes in them. That company sends us a payment occasionally for the things that they collect in the bins. We also get a small amount of money from the, bush, the brush chipping event that's at the highway department. And similarly, we spend the fund in a few ways, a little uh, differently now. We still buy composters and toters, and we resell those to residents. Uh, we, but we also print educational materials. We sometimes have to cover postage. Um, we occasionally send one of our members to a workshop or a conference because it's important for us to keep current on the state of the recycling industry so we can better serve. So those are the types of things that we now use the fund to pay for. I want to assure everyone here that every expenditure from this fund is discussed, voted on, and passed at our Recycling Commission meetings. So it's very stringently managed and very controlled. So that's why we're asking for this change. We just want to state, uh, have the stated use of the revolving fund more accurately reflect what it's currently being used for now. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> As you see on your salmon colored motion sheets, this motion has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee, both unanimously. Is there any discussion? Okay. A yes vote means you are in favor of amending the revolving fund bylaw, chapter 138.1, and a no vote means you oppose amending the revolving fund bylaw, chapter 138.1. Seeing no other questions pertaining to the motion, I will call for the vote. This takes a majority vote to pass. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? This article has passed unanimously. Article 6. Article 7. Reduce amount raised by taxes in fiscal year 2018. I have a motion under Article 7 as printed on the motion sheets. Is there a second? Okay, can Andrea or, or Dan, please? Dan O'Donnell will explain. Yes, this is our. Uh, hello. <laughs> Let go of this mic. There it is. <laughs> Working? Okay. So this is our annual uh, mo motion that we pass each year to balance the budget. Uh, essentially, we're... Please. Yeah. So we're applying these funds to balance the budget. Uh, at the March annual town meeting, we did present a projected balanced budget. However, our new growth, which is tax revenue from uh, new construction in town, uh, we actually received our lowest amount ever since 2001 at 408,000. We are projected 850. So here we're using money from the overlay and free cash to plug that budget figure and to balance the budget so we could set our tax rate. Okay, is there any discussion? Anybody have any questions? Okay, as you can see on your motion sheets, this was rec uh, recommended unanimously by the Board of Selectmen. And the Finance Committee as well voted unanimously, thank you. Okay, okay yes votes. If, if, is there any discussion on this article? On this motion, no? A yes vote means you're in favor of reducing the amount raised by taxes in fiscal year 2018. A no vote means you oppose reducing amount raised by taxes in fiscal year 2018. So you know the question pertaining to the motion, I will call for the vote. This takes a majority vote to pass. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, say nay. 
Motion passes unanimously. Article 7 passes unanimously. Article 8. Except Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 5, open parentheses, 41C, close parentheses, to increase the property tax exemption amount for qualified senior residents aged 70 and older. Um, I have a motion under Article 8 is printed in the motion sheet. Is there a second? Thank you. Um, Board of Assessors, is Paul uh, Plouffe here to describe it? Here he comes. This motion has been recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee unanimous, unanimously. I vote. Paul Floor, Principal Assessor. Um, what this does is just increases the statutory amount of the Clause 41C from $500 to $1,000, uh, bearing in mind that in the annual town meeting, we permanently voted to double all exemptions. So if it's on Westford, it means that this exemption would be $2,000. This affects seniors over 70 who are at the most disadvantaged in terms of income and assets. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? Anybody have any questions? Paul Fassbender. I'm speaking uh, as a representative of the uh, Senior Low Income and Disabled Tax Relief Committee, Slider, which was created by the Board of Selectmen after the annual town meeting to look at, research, and make comments on items like this. Uh, Paul's on the committee. We've been meeting since June uh, regularly, and we believe that uh, this is an excellent program because the relatively low income and asset limits set forth target this program to some of the most financially vi vulnerable Westford residents, those with incomes that are about a quarter of the town average income or less. We've talked with seniors in their late 70s and 80s who are on fixed incomes and have seen almost no social security increase in the last eight years. At the same time, medical costs, food, fuel, and property taxes continue to rise. They're being financially squeezed. While residents with average income generally pay about 5% of their income to property tax, this group often pays in excess of 10%. So a combination of the state's circuit breaker tax credit and Article 8 as proposed provide great steps in the right direction to help these residents stay in their homes. Therefore, our committee voted unanimously to support the article and we request your support too. Uh, if you haven't seen it, we have a chart with benefits out in the hall and uh, we hope you'll help us with our efforts and attend our meetings if you would. They're open to the public, you're all welcome. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion, any other questions? A yes, meets, a yes vote means you are in favor of, this, of accepting this Massachusetts general law to increase the property tax exemption, and a, a no vote means you oppose accepting the Massachusetts general law uh, exemption. Seeing no other questions to the motions, I will call for the vote. This takes a majority vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say nay. The motion passes, but not unanimously. Article 8 passes. Article 9. Accept Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 33, Section 59, Effect of Military Service on Salary, Seniority, and leave allowances of public employees. I have a motion, on the, I have a motion under Article 9 is printed on the motion sheet. Is there a second? Okay, Terry, to the, Terry Stater, please. Uh, good afternoon, Terry Stater, Westford Veteran Service Officer, Veterans Agent, 2A Old Colony Drive. Um, this is a uh, local option that the town gets to uh, uh, approve on a uh, three-year cycle. Um, this is the first time it's actually been uh, adopted or attempted to be adopted here in Westford. We actually have uh, one of our town employees has been called to active duty. So this is a, a time sensitive matter, so to speak. So what the, the goal of this uh, is to pay the difference between a, an employee of the town and what they make in their salary um, or what they make in their military pay. Again, this is just an offset that we pay. Uh, there's always been provisions for reemployment. 
uh, rather than take a leave of absence and get no pay and maybe have some financial hardship, this allows us, like we do in industry, uh, to pay the difference to a uh, soldier that gets called active duty involuntarily. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? Everybody have any questions? A yes vote means you're in favor of accepting Massachusetts General Law 33. And a no vote means you oppose Massachusetts General Law 33, affect military service on salary, seniority, and leave allowances of public employees. Seeing no other questions pertaining to the motion, I will call for the vote. Let's take some majority vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. Article 9 has passed unanimously. General bylaw amendments, Article 10. Amend Chapter 124 to change the title from public consumption of marijuana to marijuana and add a section to prohibit recreational marijuana establishments. I have a motion under Article 10 is printed in the motion sheets. Is there a second? Second. Um, Andrea, please. Um, Madam Moderator, I would like uh, to ask that the moderator uh, recognize Chris Clutchman to discuss um, Articles 10, uh, 11, and uh, 12 uh, together. I recognize Chris Clutchman. Thank you very much, Andrea. Mike, if I could get my slides up. Good afternoon, good evening. Um, so articles 10, 11, and 12 all have to do with the uh, ballot question, question four from the 26th, last November, the 2016 uh, a ballot that um, legalized marijuana consumption in Massachusetts for adults. Um, general, uh, we have two articles to prohibit in front of you this evening. Um, article 10 is a general bylaw, which is sponsored by the Board of Selectmen. It requires a majority. Article 11 is a prohibition that's a zoning by law amendment and that will require a two thirds majority. Just to speak generally about these, um, the uh, bylaws to prohibit marijuana establishments. So let me just talk a little bit about definitions. Marijuana establishments, um, and Mike, if you could stay on article, the, the last slide, thank you. Marijuana establishments includes um, retail shops, which is kind of probably what most of us think about, but it also um, would prohibit cultivation, testing laboratories or any other licensed facilities. And those are licensed by something called the Cannabis Control Commission, which was established by the law um, that ballot question four um, created. I wanna be very clear, this would not change the medical marijuana overlay district that was passed in 2014 that would provide for a dispensary um, in Westford. The, neither of these um, bylaws would change uh, that provision. What, this, what Article 10 and 11 would do, however, is it would prohibit um, a new use to come into town that would be um, like a retail shop or a cultivation for recreational marijuana, also called commercial marijuana. Um, I think uh, one of the reasons that this article is in front of you at special town meeting, um, which was at annual town meeting, we knew that the legislature, we had a very strong indication from the legislature that they were gonna continue to make amendments to this law that was established by the ballot question, and in fact they did. In late July, um, they passed and the governor signed um, uh, pretty uh, major amendments to the law. One of the things it did is that for towns that voted no for uh, recreational marijuana last November, um, of which Westford is such a town, um, it allowed uh, them to forego a ballot measure, a ballot question to confirm a town meeting action. So when we were freed up from that requirement to have a ballot referendum, should the town and should you vote to prohibit, um, we would have taken that kind of prohibit action to an annual town meeting because the town in an off uh, general election year, we won't have another general uh, town election until May of 2018. So it wouldn't make sense to take an action at special town meeting and then have to go to the voters um, in a ballot referendum next May. One of the reasons, so that's one of the reasons it's timely for a special town meeting. One of the things that is important if the town, if you vote this evening to approve ballot um, articles 10 and 11, 
is that um, if, you, if we prohibit commercial or recreational marijuana stores now, um, and we do get a medical dispensary, it cannot convert to a uh, recreational facility. One of the things the ballot measure did is it um, said that towns that have an existing medical dispensary, which by the way, we do not have a, such a dispensary, but had we, we would not have been allowed to prevent it from converting to recreational. So this is important um, in my uh, opinion for that, um, for that reason. Um, this uh, article, neither Article 10 or 11 would prohibit anybody from um, the provisions that are, are part of the law that allows people to grow marijuana in their homes or to consume um, in their homes. That just, it would not change that. Town Council is recommending that we do both a general bylaw article and a zoning bylaw article to prohibit as kind of belt and suspenders. Um, the zoning bylaw amendment um, to prohibit would be the most important one. The planning board, the board of selectmen, the board of health, and the police chief all support the prohibit articles, article 10 and article 11. I think I'm gonna stop there um, and let you, and, and take some questions about um, articles 10 and 11, if you have them. Are there any questions? Okay, so. Yeah, I do. Uh, so, uh, Sashi Desik. Please tell your name and your address, please. Sashi Desik and Levin Pierce. Thank you. Uh, so, what is the rationale behind uh, these two uh, prohibitions? Sure. So, one of the, I mean, so this really is here for town, town meeting um, for policy discussion by the voters. Um, the town did vote no by a vote of 52% uh, opposed to the ballot question and 48 uh, in, in favor. Um, but as the police chief has noted, as the Board of Health has noted, um, there are um, concerns about having recreational marijuana for sale in town in that it's continued exposure to youth, um, to marijuana, and making it more normal. Uh, there is a lot of evidence about um, the uh, damage that uh, marijuana does to developing brains in teenagers, and I think the thought there is continued exposure, normalization to have a marijuana retail shop like you would have in a liquor store, um, it would not be good for the youth of Westford. We do have a liquor store. We have many liquor stores, right? So what is, why is this different? Because um, marijuana, recreational marijuana has been legal in Denver, Colorado, for years now, and they have not seen any additional increased use uh, in their teen populations. I'm gonna ask the police chief to provide some more information. Chief. Good evening, uh, Tom McEnany. Uh, that's not accurate. They have seen increases in the youth population with uh, marijuana, and other concerns that we've had is uh, impaired driving. Uh, best predictor for future events is past experience. Uh, marijuana uh, use in Colorado and in Washington when they legalized it, they seen increasing fatalities. Uh, there's enough going on with kids driving, enough distractions, we don't need any more distractions. Uh, I am absolutely uh, uh, against any commercialization support uh, the articles as written uh, potential problems here far outweigh the risks that uh, and the benefits that we have uh, that we get here the, the risks and, uh, it's just it's just too much no, I, I get that point right I have a 16 year old daughter that goes to WA that's not going to stop them from going to Chelmsford or Lowell that's correct. So if, if the state has legalized it, you're losing a revenue opportunity for all intents and purposes. <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> So how do you want me to, what do you want I, me to I say? I like, I'm just trying to figure I, I, out, I, like, it, if, if, if Littleton is five miles away, yes. Chelmsford is five miles away, Lowell's five miles away, and all these kids have cars that they can get in and drive, and if they are going to illegally buy it, right, because the law stays 21 and over, 
right? So it's not my daughter unless she wants to buy it illegally, and she's here, so I'm hoping she's not going to. <laughs> right? But the whole point is, if, if everybody around us is going to do it, us stopping it is not going to stop that. Well, I, I will say from uh, Colorado and uh, Washington State, the uh, rate of fatalities that they experienced. I know in our community, we've experienced several fatalities on our roads. And if I can minimize just one. Yes, I'm Buzz Gologly from One Patent Lane. Uh, I would like somebody to speak to the financial implications of uh, accepting revenues should this pass uh, and what it might uh, mean in terms of the federal laws. Chris, would you like to address that? I'll try, um, and then I'll look to maybe town council for assistance as well. Um, so again, these articles are to prohibit um, commercial uh, uh, recreational recreational marijuana um, uh, businesses in town. So we would not be looking at. What uh, the ballot measure does allow for towns, should you have a facility, um, you know, should we eventually adopt regulations to permit and then regulate such facilities, um, the town could also have, uh, also by town meeting action, accept an additional local 3% sales tax. So there's already a 6.25% sale tax. The ballot measure allows for an additional sales tax that would go to the state. Um, and then towns, if they approve an additional three per, up to 3%, so anywhere from zero to 3%, that would be an additional um, local tax that would come back to Westward, kind of like the meals and hotels tax that have been approved here in town. So I'd have no way of estimating what that would be um, in terms of the amount of, uh, of funds. Yeah, and really what I was getting at is also the providers of the recreational drugs are going to be handling cash that they receive. And that cash, as I understand it, uh, despite the, the, and the tax revenues to the town, et cetera, uh, notwithstanding that, they're going to have to be able to deposit. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, I thought there was a, fe since there's a federal law against uh, the use of marijuana, that that would impact their ability to keep, uh, to, to deposit the money and thereby uh, cause problems uh, by having open cash that is out and available. And I believe in Colorado and other states, they've had problems with uh, actually thefts of that type of money because it's easy money to get and other problems as a result of that. Yeah, I'm gonna look to town council if he can comment on banks and the banking regulations. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Georgia. Madam Moderator, I'll put my uh, bank examiner hat on now. Um, <laughs> so there are a lot, th those were really very excellent questions. And there are a lot of issues surrounding the interplay between the state uh, marijuana law and federal law. Um, there are a lot of unanswered questions at this point. The, uh, Chris had mentioned the new Cannabis Control Commission. They're going to be issuing regulations. And I think some of these questions are going to be answered. That's not going to occur until the spring. Um, the other thing I would mention is that we have actually seen litigation filed here in Massachusetts challenging uh, marijuana establishments um, that where there's a claim that because they are engaging in activity that violates federal law, that they are subject to forfeiture under what's called the RICO statute, which is the racketeering statute. Um, any of you who have watched um, TV concerning uh, organized crime may be familiar with the, t with, the rac with the RICO statute. Those are questions that are gonna be percolating for quite some time. I'm sure there are gonna be some judicial um, uh, decisions on those, on those issues. But the point of this article and the next article is really quite simply, do the voters wanna ban the sale of this product here in Westford. And if you do vote to ban uh, this product, you will not 
be able to collect the 3% sales tax that Chris mentioned. Um, if you vote against this, you can certainly consider that at your next town meeting. Um, but uh, the, the issue before town meeting tonight is whether you want to ban retail marijuana establishments throughout the town. Thank you. I recognize the gentleman. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, my name is Michael King. I'm a resident of Westford at 94 Indian Ridge Terrace. Um, and also uh, represent Massachusetts Family Institute. Um, just want to note that we've been working with many towns and cities across the state. Um, there's over 120 towns and cities that have taken action to restrict recreational marijuana. We were just in the city of Lawrence uh, two weeks ago, and it's worth noting that the City Council of Lawrence unanimously voted to opt out, um, like we're looking to do tonight. Um, and we're happy to work with anybody that wants to help in surrounding towns and cities as well. I just want to read quickly uh, something here from the Denver DA, and the question was raised about the crime. Um, this is, uh, California voters are being told that they will see the crime rate go down if they vote to legalize marijuana commercially. This has not been the case in the state of Colorado or the city of Denver. Since the legalization of recreational marijuana in Colorado in 2013, traffic-related marijuana deaths have increased 48%. Marijuana-related emergency room visits have increased 49%, and marijuana-related calls to the Poison Center have increased 100%. According to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation, in 2015, statewide homicides in Colorado rose 14.7% over the previous year. In Pueblo, Colorado had the highest homicide rate in the state with 11.1 .1 killings per 100,000 residents. Aurora, Colorado's homicide rate went more than doubled from 2014. And lastly, additionally, more places in Colorado were robbed and more thefts occurred, especially cars, as 193,115 motor vehicles were reported stolen, up 27.7% in 2015 from the previous year. In 2015, sexual assaults rose 10% in Colorado, with Denver, Aurora, Lakewood, Westminster, and Pablo all reporting higher numbers as well. And it goes on, and I have a copy of this if anybody wants a copy afterwards. Uh, and lastly, I just want to say that half of the sale of uh, marijuana in the state of Colorado is edibles. Um, so if you've seen some of the pictures, and I have, a, I have some other information, of the pictures tell a thousand words. Um, the Reese's that look like Reese's are actually called hashies, uh, but it looks just like a Reese's. Um, and the Almond Joy is called Ganja Joy um, and looks just like Almond Joy. So who are they trying to market uh, the edibles to? Um, and then lastly, I'll just say uh, there are more pot shops in Colorado than Starbucks and McDonald's combined. Um, so I like to say that the pot shops are growing like weeds uh, in the state of Colorado, and I don't think that's what we want uh, in Westford or surrounding towns. Thank you. Thank you. Um, gentlemen in the uh, post. David Hudson, Myrtle Avenue. The name marijuana was a propagandistic name given to a commercial crop known as hemp. Commercial hemp farmers grew hemp for sail cloth and were on the verge of uh, marketing their product for acid-free paper uh, when some timber interest caught on and used uh, national bigotry against Mexicans to, to push this uh, prohibition of marijuana. So the process of re-legalizing marijuana has been a slow one. Prejudice against Mexicans may have diminished greatly, but the prejudice against their, what had been their uh, recreational drug of choice has remained. The arguments that we give about just saving one life can equally be applied, uh, just as well be applied to banning guns or banning driving over 30 miles an hour or banning cholesterol-laden foods. We are adults. We are responsible for our children or stepchildren, uh, as, the, as may be the case. We are, not, we are not children to be told how to live our own lives. As far as the homicide statistics in Colorado are concerned, you might recall that there have been a series of, uh, let's say, um, racial, racial propaganda blaming police departments 
and causing a, a huge increase in homicides nationwide. So to say that there has been an increase in homicides in Colorado, and therefore it must be due to the passage of, uh, the, uh, to the legalization of marijuana is to engage in post hoc propter hoc reasoning, which is an invalid <clears throat> form of reasoning. The trend in, with regard to marijuana, has been towards legalization. And eventually, I believe, even Westford won't be so foolish as to continue to support the extremely evil and thoroughly moronic war on drugs. Thanks. Little question. Point of order. taking a position on George Murray 14 Haywood Road. I'm not taking a position on this article. I'm of an age that I never even tried it. But for over 40 years that I'm personally aware of, this town meeting has been operated on the basis of reasoned discussion and debate and argument. Several times so far in the discussion of this article, you have permitted boos and cat calls you have permitted applause for one side or the other, and that's totally out of order for a town meeting. The next thing we'll be devolving into is who can shout the loudest, and that'll be the position that town meeting takes. I think that's entirely appropriate and calls for a change in behavior on how the town meeting is run. Okay, in keeping with Westford town meeting tradition, no applause or other responses for any debater is allowed. Diane? Thank you. Diane Wood, 122 Depot uh, in town. I have one statement and one question. The uh, statement is the, the passion that I hear about the concern uh, for our kids, uh, for accidents, for driving, um, for being inebriated. I'd like uh, residents and, and the boards to think of that the next time uh, a liquor store wants to open in town. So the next time a liquor store opens in town, think about this discussion that's going on now and the concern for our kids and not be as so quick as to pass um, another source of revenue that comes into the town. And then the question is, I noticed that the Finance Committee uh, members, four of them, abstained. And I'd like to understand uh, why that was. And I'll sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Glenn Secor, 56 R Pleasant Street, and Vice Chair of the Finance Committee. We did have four abstentions on one of the articles um, because we really didn't see the financial issue there. It's an unknown source of revenue, 3% of what? And the costs are equally incalculable at this point. So we didn't think that there was a, a, an ascertainable financial impact that we could evaluate and vote on. After, the, the, after Article 10, I believe it was, we simply didn't take a position on the other two articles. Did I answer your question? Gentlemen. Ori Blumenthal, 14 Plain Road. Thank you. Uh, I find the questions asked uh, good but somewhat short-sighted. Uh, you cannot translate this into money issue. How much are your uh, children worth? Uh, could you tell me? Comparison with alcohol is uh, uh, completely without substance because these are different chemicals with different effects. I'd like to bring uh, two, uh, two examples. One from the uh, traditional science, science of medicine. Experiment uh, has been uh, made with the rats. They offered uh, two uh, possibilities for the rats. 
a rat could do something more complicated and get significant reward. A large quantity of food, better quality food, and such. Or it could just go press a button and receive uh, sustenance, nothing fancy. And in normal uh, environment, all the rats, without exception, went for complicated operations, got their plenty of food, were happy. After receiving a cannabis, uh, the, the trend was completely opposite. They chose to just press that button, get that uh, substance, and, and be done. Uh, further research showed that uh, the rats uh, preserved the capability for performing those uh, complex operations, but uh, they simply, for some reasons, chose not to exercise that capability. My question, uh, a rhetoric question, is do you want your kids to have capabilities but uh, always choosing not to exercise them? Uh, somebody mentioned a Mexican a recreational drug of choice. I wonder how much uh, people know about uh, Mexican uh, drugs of choice. But uh, an expert, a shaman, Victor Sanchez, and those with smartphones, please feel free to Google and learn for yourself who that person is. He travels uh, worldwide uh, teaching performing uh, healing. He is from uh, Mexican uh, shamanic uh, tradition. He refuses to teach or uh, uh, treat any person who tried drugs, including uh, marijuana. And I want to underscore that that's a person who, unlike layman, knows the differences between somebody who finds some... Uh, That's three minutes. Are you almost are you wrapping up? Basically, he's like a uh, doctor uh, who prescribing medication knows its effects and such. And he refuses to even deal with a person who was exposed to drugs. Make your own decision. Thank you. Kate Hollister. Kate Hollister, 25, is it okay? I can hear you. Okay, 25 Einbrook Road. I'm speaking as the chairman of the uh, planning board just to uh, explain, because the person over here brought up the question of, uh, about the, uh, why are we doing this? And um, when we discussed this in, in the planning board, we had the option of doing a moratorium, but because of the uh, change in the, uh, the way the state said things could go, we realized this town, basically the majority didn't want this during the election, and uh, we felt that it would be proper to bring this back to our legislative uh, body here, the uh, annual town meeting, and ask if you want to reaffirm that we as a town are not really in favor of having this. Just because somebody, you can do something doesn't mean that you should do it or really want to do it. So that's what we are asking this body here. Do you want to continue with your sentiment that uh, you do not uh, favor having a recreational facility here in town? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Wendy Dara, 16 Wing Road. Um, I, I am against this article only because of the restrictions. I think it's kind of broad where it outlines uh, laboratory use. There's a lot of clinical studies being done worldwide that has found uh, THC, yes, people get high from it. But clinically, that's just a byproduct. They're not even interested in the THC. They're interested in the compounds and breaking those down that is being found to actually uh, resolve diseases and symptoms and slow down cancers and stuff like that. Uh, I, I know this because my daughter's in that field. She's a director of a laboratory. And she, she was surprised to hear that we were going to restrict laboratories uh, that is for clinical medical use. I mean, 
Can anybody address that, why that was being restricted? Chris Crutcher, please address that. Sure. Um, for town meetings discussion, we wanted to put on the floor, you know, a prohibition um, that was fairly broad. Um, so if there's a motion to amend, you, you could do that. Uh, but we just took the, the broadest approach. Okay. Well, I would like to make an amendment to allow clinical laboratories in town, basically for the purpose of breaking down compounds within cannabis for for diseases and medical use. Any amendments need to be put in writing? Okay. Need to be put in writing and brought to me, please. Okay, I'll, I'll do that, thank you. Um. Good evening, Madam Moderator. Mike Charlie from 10 Weedamu. Uh, I'm speaking in favor of the prohibition of any and all businesses related to the recreational use of marijuana within the town of Westford. I'm not really speaking from an ideological perspective, but rather a, a personal-based perspective uh, as lived through by members of my immediate family living in community that have, has gone down this pathway. I grew up in southern Oregon. Just for perspective, town very similar to Westford. Uh, Oregon passed uh, legalization of medicinal marijuana in early 2014. The le use of uh, possession and use of recreational marijuana in e early 2015. Retail sales commenced in late 2015 and retail, retail sales of edible marijuana products commenced in June of 2016. So they're going down a very, they've gone down a very similar pathway to, <coughs> excuse me, to what appears will be this pathway. And it isn't really the concept that I want to discuss, but it's really the, uh, the unintended consequences that these communities are now facing. And I was only going to speak to three of them. Two of them have been covered pretty well already this evening, so I won't, I won't reiterate those. But impact on local health and emergency services. Uh, since the legalization of recreational marijuana in Oregon, uh, marijuana-related emergency uh, services have had a demand increase of a factor of 13. But most concerning is the fact that 38% of those are due to accidental ingestion by children, and a third of those were accidental ingestion by children with a median age of five years old. There is a rise and a proven rise in the crime rate in the area, and there's also a pro proven degradation in property values. For if you don't know, I didn't know until my family informed me that the, that the production and harvesting of marijuana, even if you have four plants in your home, that process itself produces a rather uh, annoying and strong odor that not only spreads across the community and the neighborhood, but can linger for quite some time. That accompanied by the rise in crime rate and the burden, extra burden on the health system has lowered property prices because it's greatly reduced the pool of buyers who are willing to move into a community like that. And as a final perspective, uh, the gentleman earlier here said, well, gee, if we do something here in Westford and outlaw it, the town next door won't and the town next door won't. Well, in Oregon, since the legislation passed, 94 communities across the state have enacted legislation just like we're talking about here this evening because of these unintended consequences. So I would ask you to consider the detrimental impact on our community and vote in favor of these articles. Thank you. Nancy Roberts, Buckboard Drive. I have a, a question that's kind of a follow-up on a point that the first gentleman who spoke on my right raised. Um, he suggested that there were more Starbucks and McDonald's in a certain town um, of marijuana dispensaries. If this prohibition were not put in, is there some sort of a licensing that would allow us to limit the number of dispensaries? Chris Crutcher will address that. Hi there, thank you. Um, so I, I will speak very briefly to um, the question of if this prohibition, uh, Articles 10 and 11, do not both pass, because the boards are recommending passage of both of these, the general bylaw and the zoning bylaw. Um, Article 12 is a moratorium, and so the boards uh, who consider the two prohibits, if both 10 and 12, 11 do not both pass, they recommend the moratorium. The moratorium is something that puts and Mike, maybe if you want to just put up the next slide. Um, it puts a hold on anybody coming into town um, 
until December 31st, 2018, and that would allow the town um, a chance to develop, um, either bring back, um, uh, prohibit bylaws to the next town meeting, or even the town meeting after that in a year from now, um, uh, and it allow, or it would allow us to also develop um, a bylaws that would allow but regulate um, these uses. Um, so it gives us that time. Um, so if, I, I hope that's answering your question. That, that's what, that would be the next step that would be recommended here in Westford is that we adopt the moratorium, which is a zoning bylaw amendment that would just not allow anybody to submit those, uh, any proposals to us. Which a little bit further information is that the Cannabis Control Commission in the state does have a state licensing process that would um, go forward. Um, and they, that, again, those regulations, and this is the timing is outlined in the ballot question. Um, so the legislature changed that timing uh, uh, slightly. But um, though they would start accepting license applications on April 1st, 2018. Um, our annual town meeting is the third Saturday in March, and so it would be immediately after that. Um, so we do want to have something in place that would um, allow for a, uh, a, at least a moratorium in the, in the near term. But the Cannabis Control Commission will be developing their regulations, they'll be publishing draft regulations, and they will be initiating a licensing process at the state. And that's one of the reasons that the language in both of the Articles 10 and 11 makes reference to any licensed facility. Um, because we're not even sure what other kinds of facilities or what other kinds of uses they may license. Uh, for example, a delivery service could be a licensed um, application, and so these um, definitions um, refer to the, that licensing, and it's state licensing that we're referring to. So if five different organizations with five licenses came to town, would we have to accept all of them, or could we just take one? Well, it would depend, uh, should there be no prohibition adopted at town meeting, um, and there was an allow but regulate, um, it would depend on what those regulations are. Um, I can't really speculate on what that would be right now because we'd be having a committee process and be having a public process to do that. What I can say is that when we adopted the medical marijuana overlay district, we did limit that to one medical dispensary um, that would be allowed in town. So it's possible that the town if the legislative body wanted to go that way, that we could you know, make some limitations as to the number. Um, so, so that's kind of yet to be determined. It's a good question. I'm gonna start with a motion under Article 10 right now. Can you put that, Mike, can you put it up there? Can I have your name, please? D-A-R-A? D as in dog, A-R-R-A-G-H, okay. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, the motion that's on the floor is what's printed on, on, the, motion, on the motion book at, on page five at the very bottom. And Ms. Dara has made a motion to amend it by striking this sentence right here. So now we're going to debate this amendment. I need, a, I need a second. Okay. Okay. Discussion in the second in the question. Yes, I have a question that pertains to both of this. My your name is and Lewis your address. Haddock. My name is Lewis Haddock at Six Room Drive. Thank you. Um, I'd like to get the definition. I see the term used in both uh, motions, this one and the next one, of non-medical. 
I like, I think it would help everybody to understand what that definition means, whether that includes medical laboratories or things like that. Thank you. Chris, Clutchin will explain that. So we're trying to distinguish here between um, the medical marijuana overlay district in town and the, the uh, ballot question and the law that was passed about medical marijuana. Um, and so that is the reason for the term non-medical. So this would be non-medical use. Um, we have uh, def definitions in our zoning bylaw that um, relate directly to um, that 2014 law that was passed by that ballot initiative. Council, if you have anything further to add. So am I to take it that what you mean with that is that a medical establishment is a, that is allowed by law would be allowed under this? So you've confused us with the way you wrote it down. It would be better if you just simply say medical places are allowed. Well, this isn't actually ha having to do with the existing zoning bylaw that exists that to allow for a medical marijuana dispensary. That's right. a separate general law in, the Mass in Massachusetts general law, right. and there are separate definitions. Understood. This is a new law that came in with new definitions. And so we're trying to refer to the law that was approved in 2016 that it allowed for recreational marijuana. Yeah, but my point is, we're all lay people, we're not lawyers. Yep. We, I bet very few of us have ever read those laws. Yep. So it, when you write these things, you need to talk in our English so that we understand what you're trying to do here. Yep. I, I think you're saying you're going to allow, if there's a medical thing that's allowed under law and it wants to come to Westford and it meets our requirements, it can come. And I think that answers the question. So so if it's a medical marijuana dispensary uh, that wanted to come into town. Well, let me be clear. You're using the word dispensary. And what we are talking about is laboratory. So if oh, a medical sorry, laboratory wants to come okay. here, will it be allowed under this amendment or will it be not allowed? Yeah. Medical laboratories are generally allowed under the zoning bylaw, depending on different zoning districts. Um, but a, a medical, a testing facility that was a testing facility to test the strength and the um, ingredients of recreational marijuana, right. um, as written in these bylaws, that in the articles, would not have been allowed. What I understand this motion would be to remove um, that language from um, the prohibition so that if a testing facility that wanted to test Recreational marijuana products for the recreational marijuana industry, if a, if a laboratory like that came into Westford under the proposed article, that would not be allowed. What I understand this motion would be to allow such a facility that would test recreational marijuana product. I, I guess I, I, I'm trying to um, explain it to the best of my ability. Um, the licensing and the control of medical and recreational marijuana is quite complicated um, at the state level um, and then as it um, comes down to the local level. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to recognize the in favor. He's been standing there a long time. Please. Uh, thank you, moder uh, moderator. I, uh, this always happens to me. I get up to say something that comes, I should be over there, so I'll try to put it all into one, okay? Wade Fox, Hartford Road. Thank you. Um, I think, first off, we have a very clear opportunity here to say what our town's going to be. And I applaud basically the Board of Selector, uh, Selectmen, everybody, that is supporting this um, effort. Uh, I think that we should understand just because other cities do things, we don't necessarily have to follow them over the cliff. And in fact, if you read the Lowell Sun, you'll see that, like the gentleman said out in Oregon, a lot of towns that said yes are reconsidering we have an opportunity to be consistent here in Westford. So I am in favor of the uh, proposal. I am opposed, since I'm standing up here, I'm opposed to the amendment. And the reason why I'm opposed to it is that we really have a fairly clean, understandable warrant article up there that basically says we're making a clean sweep. Uh, with all due respect, I don't think you know, Bristol Myers or anybody's gonna come in here and buy something to start a marijuana uh, research plant. So I think that uh, is a, a thing that 
while you may approve it, starts to open up the door a little bit. I think the purpose of the original uh, warrant was right. It gives the people a chance to, and as I can see from some of the confusion, a chance to say yes or no to whether we're going to have a commercial marijuana system here in Westford. And by defeating the amendment and then supporting the original warrant, I think we make a clean sweep of what the people in Westford actually want. Thank you. Thank you. Just as a point of reference right now, we are speaking specifically to this amendment. Question? Uh, Margaret Wheeler, 171 Depot Road. Um, since we're striking the word independent, does that open the door that a dispensary can come in and start doing testing, um, you know, be, becoming a testing laboratory because they're not, they're not, we're not differentiating in taking out this wording by, you know, in de, you, the wording originally was independent. By taking that out, what's the implication? Um, again, the, this, you, the motion um, would, would allow for a testing facility. I, I don't know that the word independent makes a big difference here. Um, we would still be prohibiting a store that would sell marijuana, um, a cultivation facility, a processing facility, or other licensed activities. But this motion would allow for a testing facility for recreational marijuana product. Okay. But would it, would it allow testing laboratories for, you said recreational use, what about for medical use? Would that also allow testing laboratories for medical use? I'm going to go back and look at the zoning bylaw for our medical marijuana overlay district, but I believe that we allowed for dispensary. I, I'm just going to have to double okay. check the definition of that, but I will check that and try and get back to you. Okay. Next, the gentleman at the question microphone. Uh, Jeff Castro, 110 Providence Road. Um, as we're seeing all types of non-medical marijuana establishments, does taking this out have any effect at all from a legal standpoint? Chris, or, or counsel, please. If the um, if this amendment is approved, someone could uh, establish in the town a retail marijuana testing facility. Now, the key word here is marijuana establishment. That's what distinguishes it from a medical dispensary. So when you see medical establishment, that means retail or recreational marijuana. And as the bylaw was crafted and recommended by the um, planning board, it would include a retail, uh, a, a retail marijuana testing facility. If this, it, it would include that. If this amendment passes, it would be excluded from what's prohibited in the town. Come up to the microphone, please, so people can hear. It, it says all types of non-medical marijuana establishments. It, what, it, what it says is um, all types of non-medical marijuana establishments, including, and right now in, it includes independent testing, uh, an independent testing laboratory. If those words are stricken, then I think at least the argument would be that it was the intent of the town not to permit a testing facility for recreational marijuana within the town. If you have a question, go up to the microphone. Addressing this question. Leslie? Uh, Leslie Thomas at AO Colony Drive. How many medical laboratories do we have in town now? Chris can answer that. Oh, you mean just in general, testing facilities? Yes, do we have medical labs in I, town I don't now? have an exact number. We definitely do have medical testing, um, medical devices and medical testing. I would say yes, we do have some. I don't have a number. Okay, but testing of what I would call products versus, um, you know, implements or whatever. Yes, yeah. I, I, I just don't have a number for okay. you. So 10 yes. or 20 or two? I, 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 don't, I don't know, Leslie. Okay. 
I don't Thank know. You. And it, 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 the, but a testing laboratory would be allowed under the zoning. Okay, well. thanks. Thank you. Question? Jim Gazzo, Carolina Lane. I, I think there's a problem with uh, just striking those three words, independent testing laboratory, because if you go to Mass General Law Chapter 94G and look in Section 1, which is the definitions, it specifically lists a whole bunch of activities, all of those up there, including independent testing lab, but also marijuana testing facilities and uh, a definition for marijuana establishment, which includes um, marijuana testing facilities. So just by, if, if you strike the, um, those three words up there, it doesn't change what we're banning from 94G section one. So the, the law allows the town through a bylaw uh, to prohibit the operation of one or more types of marijuana establishments. So notwithstanding what the statute, how the statute defines marijuana establishments, town meeting may by bylaw ban one or more of those types of establishments, which would include a testing laboratory. Right, and I think my concern is it says that all types of non-medical marijuana establishments are banned. And not all types are. Just by not listing it there doesn't, doesn't include it in the ban. I think you ought to indicate well, positive sense that independent testing laboratories are permitted under this bylaw. Okay, so it's something like that. That would just be a suggestion. Yes, right. So remember, this is a this is a, a motion that's been made by a voter, and anyone's free to amend this motion by expressly excluding marijuana testing facilities. Did you say me? Stephanie Granger, 101 Russell's Way. I'm opposed to this amendment. I think that we have seen in town several times lately where having a broad definition and not a specific definition has come back to hurt us and to haunt us. And that this is not referring to testing for medical uses or purposes. This is referring to recreational and I would move a vote on it. Oh, please. Thank you. It's not fair. Okay. Um, here. Wait, she moved, the, she moved oh, the vote. Oh, sorry, we, we motion. <laughs> you have to say it again. You have to move the question. I got a second. She's got to some practice Motion to move a question has to be by someone else. I'll make a motion, we move the question. Okay. Second. Okay, so we'll now vote to end debate on the amendment. All in favor of stopping, ceasing uh, debate, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Okay, did not pass unanimously. Okay, so now we move to vote on the amendment. Okay. All those in favor? Excuse me, can I say something? Before? We ended discussion. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to vote. So now we have voted to stop debate. And now we will vote on the amendment. Did we unplug it? Okay, this is a simple majority. It's not on the screen yet. Point of order? Go to the microphone. This is coming up. They're, they're working on getting it up here, so. In your instructions on this vote, could you please um, 
be explicit on what it is that we're voting on? Okay. What we are voting on in favor of is striking independent testing laboratory. That's a yes. And a no vote is to leave it, leave the amendment the way it is. Leave the motion the way it is. Point of order, Madam Moderator. Are we currently voting to end a debate, or did we already we end already debate? We ended debate. We may, end debate. May I ask a question, because I'm still unclear on the wording change? We're, we're, we're about to vote on the amendment. I know, but it's not up yet, so could I take the moment to uh, ask my question? No, sorry. <laughs> okay. Do I need to repeat how we're voting here? Okay. If you are in favor of, of, of striking this, of striking independent testing laboratory from the motion, you will vote aye, and that's a yes. If you are going to vote to leave the motion the way it is, that's a no vote. Is that clear? Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> All those in favor of striking independent testing laboratories? Say aye. You will vote with, you will vote with your voice in a normal tone. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Motion. Okay, so now so it goes back to the original. Okay, so that means it goes back to the original motion. Okay. There we go. If you have a question. Oh, Fa it failed. Okay. The vote failed. Or the amendment. The amendment sort of failed. Okay. okay. So we'll go back to discussion. Back to Article 10, discussion. Hi, my name is Sue Hanley. I live at 26 Kersey Circle. I am on the Board of Health and I'm also a school nurse in Westford at the middle school. I am totally in favor of this prohibition. I am um, thrilled that the town voted to say no, um, even when the state said yes. In terms of the question before about you know, if other towns are doing it. We did a good job about cigarette smoking and we got rid of it. We said you had to be 21 in Westford and I was proud of Westford for making that decision even when other towns were saying we were gonna allow it to continue. Um, people are not realizing that we have not done enough testing on the developing brain which does not develop until you're 25 and we're allowing um, the, the passage of marijuana regulations and, and having it in towns when we have not done, not done enough studies on the brain. So I am totally in favor of this prohibition, and I hope that everybody in this room will vote on this behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Thank you. I'm at the wrong microphone, but I would like to call the question. Your name and your Den address? Den Den Denali Delmar, 8 Dunstable Road. And I second. Thank, Thank you. you. OK. So now we're going to vote. Stop. We're going to vote to stop debate. Okay. On. Okay, debate's all done. Okay, we're going to vote on the article. A yes vote. No. I'm sorry. Oh, we're going to vote on the motion to move the question. 
We need a two-thirds majority. Okay, all those in favor of ending debate, say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. <laughs> Passes, but not unanimously. Okay, so now we will vote on the article. Okay, right? Just Article 10, yes, just Article 10. Okay, yes vote means you are in favor of amending Chapter 124 to change the title from public consumption of marijuana to marijuana and add a section to prohibit recreational marijuana establishments. A no vote means you oppose amending chapter 124 to change the title from public consumption of marijuana to marijuana and add a section to prohibit recreational marijuana establishments. Seeing no other questions pertaining to the motion, and we need a majority vote for this, I will call for the vote. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Can we do that vote again? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Okay. okay, it passes. Unanimous. Thank you. The majority. Okay. Zoning bylaw amendments, Article 11. Add a new section 8.7 of the town zoning bylaw to prohibit recreational marijuana establishments. Amend section 10.2, general definitions, and amend appendix A, table of principal use regulations. I have a motion under Article 11 is printed in the motion sheet. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Chris Clutchman, please. Hi there, I'm not gonna add much more here. This is an amendment to the zoning bylaw. It does require a two-thirds majority. Uh, zoning bylaw amendments can only be made by this body, the legislative body for the town. It is very similar. We have the same definition. Um, and this would add an, another section, 8.7. Um, and also changes the principal, the table of principal uses. It adds the um, medical marijuana, I'm sorry, recreational marijuana establishments, and then prohibits it in all zoning districts. So this is also a prohibition in the zoning bylaw. I'd like to ask for the report and the recommendation of the planning board, please. Moderator, the uh, planning board voted unanimously in favor of this article. The selectman. Andrea, please let us know how the Board of Selectmen voted. The Board of Selectmen unanimously support this article. Thank you. Eric Kintner, 14 Village View Road, in view of a previous vote. Why is this article necessary? Council? As the uh, director indicated at the beginning of her remarks, um, uh, the, the article we just voted on was really more of a belt and suspenders. That was a, an amendment to the general bylaw. This is an amendment to the zoning bylaw, and the attorney general has ruled that in order for a town to prohibit marijuana s establishments throughout the town, it must be by a zoning bylaw. Um, we're not totally in agreement with that interpretation of the law, but the Attorney General is the one that, that has to approve this. So if you do not enact a zoning bylaw that's essentially identical to this general bylaw, um, it would call into question whether the town has effectively banned marijuana establishments in the town. So as the director said earlier, this is really the most important vote if your intent is to ban medical marijuana establishments and it will, excuse me, <laughs> recreational marijuana establishments and it will require a two thirds vote. Thank you, Council. Is there any discussion? Madam Moderator, um, Elisa Nakash in Holzberg, Betty Lane. Given the importance of the two-thirds vote, and I'll be honest, 
there are times I feel kind of intimidated here at town meeting myself. Um, I'd like to ask for a paper ballot so that everybody can vote their conscience on this one without fear of intimidation. Thank you. I need 20 people to agree with this. You I hope. You need to stand up. Okay, we have 20 plus. Okay, so when it comes to the vote, the tellers will need to distribute the ballots. Okay, um, Mr. Jeffries? Yes, Bob Jeffries, 11 Boston Road. Uh, first of all, it would have been really nice to know that the Attorney General thinks that the vote we just took before is probably not a legal vote. That would have been something to know in the discussion. But on to this point in particular, does this prohibit delivery? Did this prohibit I couldn't hear the rest? Does it prohibit in any way, shape, or form delivery to the town? In other words, other establishments or online or Amazon Prime? Chris Clutching. The Thank question you. was, uh, would this prohibit uh, delivery of recreational marijuana? Um, what it does is it prohibits other licensed activities, and Mr. Jeffries, I don't know yet because the Cannabis Control Commission has not yet made any regulations. I don't know if delivery services will be a licensed activity, but if it is a licensed activity that the CCC decides that it wants to regulate, then yes, it would. It does not change somebody's ability uh, and other things that are given in the law, such as growing at home, um, uh, in, um, uh, taking marijuana in your own home. Uh, it would not change that. Thank you, Chris. Um, Mr. Galvin. Thank you. Uh, Dennis Galvin, 90 Concord Road. Uh, I'm speaking in favor of the amendment. And I would ask the, uh, urge the town meeting to think of this in terms of prudence. This whole, uh, the whole uh, prospect of, uh, of uh, legalizing recreational marijuana is a very uncertain one at this point in time. Uh, we've heard a lot of information about uh, situations in other states, Colorado. We've heard information about uh, some of the revenue issues, uh, the fate, state and federal conflict. Uh, another question is whether or not the state of Massachusetts is up to the prospect of actually providing good oversight of this whole process. Uh, and uh, my, my sense is, although I would leave with you with this, is the idea that at this point in time, I don't think we should venture down this road because there are consequences that we would regret later. We can always vote this in a couple of years down the line if it looks as though this is a stable operation. But right now, why take a chance? Thank you. Yes. Did you record a second? Your name? Bob Schaffer, 7 Blakes Hill Road. Did you record a second for this article? On article 11? We have a second. Thank you. Both in your hands? Sorry, you, you don't have your ballots yet? Okay. When you get your ballots, it's going to look like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to left, on the left is yes, and the right is no. You're going to tear it in half, and then you're going to pass in the side that you want to vote with. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'd like to. continue with discussion this gentlemen thank you madam moderator Matt Foster 63 Buckboard Drive I just want to distinguish between 
the uh, concept of uh, restricting use of a particular stuff like marijuana and the encouragement of a legal activity, including commerce in that legal activity. Um, I, I completely support and understand anybody who's against the use of any kind of a, of a mind-altering drug, probably not the best thing to do. But what, we're, what the arguments here tonight are mostly along those lines, and we've sort of glossed over the possibility of significant uh, monetary gains for the town, not just in the 3%, but in things like property tax and those kinds of things. And I think um, the, uh, the arguments uh, against don't really uh, address that piece of the, of the question. Chris, did you want to address that? No? Okay. Tom Slice, 7 Ward Hill Road. Uh, Madam Moderator, I'd like to move the question. Okay, now we're going to vote to stop discussion. Okay, all those in favor of ceasing discussion, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Okay. All right, now. Okay, this needs to pass by a two-thirds majority. A yes vote means you are in favor of adding a new section 8.7 to the town's zoning bylaw to prohibit recreational marijuana establishments, amend section 10.2 general definitions, and amend ap appendix A table of principal use regulations. A no vote means you oppose adding a new section 8.7 of the town's zoning bylaw to prohibit recreational recreation marijuana dis establishments, amend section 10.2 general definitions and amend Appendix A, Table of Principal Use Regulations. You have your ballots. Yes is on the left and no is on the right. Do you still haven't gotten your ballots yet? Does everybody have a ballot now? Okay. Is everybody clear with what you need to do? Okay. You have yes on the left, no on the right. Tear it in half. And then the, bath, then the boxes are going to come around and you're going to put your choice into the box. Okay. Are we going to pass the boxes around, please, so we can, what? Okay. okay, the boxes will be coming around. Put your yes or no piece of paper. Point of order, come up to the microphone. I cannot hear you. Could you please repeat for us the effect of a yes or a no I'm vote? Say again. Greg Flom, Quarry Hill Road. Could you please repeat for us what the effect is of a yes or a no vote? I read that again? Okay. A yes vote means you are in favor of this article, in favor of adding a new section 8.7 of the town zoning bylaw to prohibit re recreational marijuana establishments, amend section 10.2 general definitions, and amend appendix A table of principal use regulations. A no vote means you oppose adding a new section 8.7 of the town zoning bylaw to prohibit recreational marijuana establishments, or amend section 10.2 general definitions, and amend appendix A, table of principal use regulations. This needs to pass by a two thirds majority.
point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Yes. Point of order. Um, Madam Moderator, may I suggest that we table uh, Article 11 until such time as this vote is counted and move on with the rest this of the business? This is Article 11. Begging, uh, if you can, uh, begging we will your want pardon, to Article 12. table Article 12. I, may I ask that we table Article 12 until Article 11 is counted and that we yes. move on with business? Yes. I need a second. Has everyone voted? Is that the, mic, the cameraman over here? Have you voted? Have you voted? Okay. Have they voted already? Okay. Someone go to the back. Steve's all set? Okay. Okay. Accept a motion to table Article 12. A second. second. Okay. Madam Moderator, Kate Hollister, Chair of the Planning Board, that was also going to be my recommendation. Sorry? That was also going to be my recommendation. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Kate. Appreciate that. Okay, so now we will move on to, while the, okay, take a vote on the motion to table. All in favor of tabling uh, Article 12 while we, while the ballots are being counted for Article 11, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Passed unanimously. Okay, on to, well, on to Article 13. Okay. Okay, zoning bylaw amendments. Article 13, amend section 9.4, site plan review. Section 10.2, general definitions and Appendix A to include a limited site plan review for solar fields and large solar facilities. I have a motion. Under Article 13, as printed in the motion sheets, is there a second? Thank you. Kate Hollister, please. Uh, Madam Moderator, um, as you know, solar farms or solar energy facilities are relatively new in uh, for, uh, Massachusetts in the Northeast. Uh, and the Massachusetts legislature uh, has decided that solar energy facilities are now should be protected under mass general law. Therefore, we as a town cannot prohibit them, but we do have the opportunity to uh, review, the planning board has the opportunity to review an application for such a facility on a limited basis uh, with guidelines uh, uh, described in mass general law. Currently, uh, we, the town of Westford, do not have any provisions in our zoning bylaws for a process to review of solar facilities. So if one comes before the town right now, they would be allowed to do it by right. They would not have to notify abutters. They would not have to come before the uh, planning board for any kind of review at all to make sure that it's appropriate, that, that, that they're doing things to make this uh, solar farm acceptable to the abutters and to the town in general. Therefore, um, we feel, we put as our priority that uh, we want to add language in our bylaws to allow a limited review of solar farms, and that's what this uh, uh, proposal is about. It's, uh, the proposed changes to our zoning bylaws would al allow us limited site plan review of solar energy s systems, we're calling them large ones, and we have just find large as being any kind of facility that is a half acre or more in size. This proposal would not restrict your ability to put solar panels on your house. Um, it's just for large um, commercial uses of, the, uh, of uh, solar. Um, we have the wording in, in your packet. It, uh, illuminates the type of review that we can do. Um, and I'm spazzing out here because I can't find it in my motion packet. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, the uh, planning board voted unanimously to recommend this article. As the selectman. Any discussion? Oh, Andrea? The board of, the board of 
Board of Selectmen voted to support this unanimously. Thank you. Any discussion? Question? Erica Cole, Fort Francis Hillwood. I'm just curious about the definition of large, and you said that it was a uh, half, half acre. acre. Uh, 20,000 square feet. Uh, this oh. was arbitrary. We felt we, um, this was based on a lot of research by our town planner, Jeff Morissette. Recognize Jeff Morissette. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Jeff Morissette, town planner. So we did a little uh, research here. We gathered some sample uh, model zoning for regulation of solar energy systems. This is from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And in their example, they actually proposed three different tiered systems, small, medium, and large. They provided the square footage as Kate suggested. Um, and also an amount of, of power that could be uh, generated from those facilities. What we did is we sort of tried to keep it simple, because this is the first attempt to propose such a facility, or a bylaw rather, and so we kind of just prorated it and only came up with a large, distinguished between large and anything under large. And so we kind of just um, went with that approach, and it's based on some examples put forth on the state. So that's where we got those numbers and those ranges. And, and is the definite of Definition of large included in here? I couldn't find it. Yes, it is. Um, we're adding a section in the definitions in section 10 for uh, we're doing a lot of. I see it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Question? Madam Moderator, Lisa Nakashi, and Betty please. Lane. Um, I'd like to thank our boards for taking this action, and I hope that everyone will vote for this. Um, I think it addresses some concerns that many of us have had with the solar farm that went in, which incidentally also brought in over 300,000 cubic tons of dirty dirt from Boston that none of us wanted. So my question is, would you please verify for me that this is a general bylaw, not a zoning bylaw, and that if that solar farm goes out of business on Route 40, according to this bylaw, they'd be required to remove those hundreds of thousands of yards of cubic dirt or no? which was never tested before it was brought here under DEP's current regulations. This is a this is a zoning bylaw. It is. So it won't apply to them. Jeff Moore said town planner and town council can jump in at any time here, but that <laughs> solar facility is an existing facility that it would be grandfathered from the adoption of this zoning bylaw, and I guess I defer to council as to whether or not the removal and abandonment clause would have any bearing on the pre-existing Yes, that's my question. Thank you. Are the no, it would not. Would okay. not it would not. Unfortunate. But thank you for taking these actions now. Thank you. Question? Most globally, one patent lane. Uh, as I understand it, there's there's no planned action uh, to have any sort of facility like this. Is that correct? Currently, there are no applications before us. The town has uh, gotten some interest. They've They've had people call up and ask about it, but nobody has put forth an application at this time. Okay, I just wonder why we're spending the time here doing something that is uh, very uh, arbitrary, basically, and, and uh, it's you're trying to trying to anticipate a requirement that uh, doesn't exist. So I was wondering why we're wasting our time. Um, we have received several inquiries over the last year, year and a half. Some of them would have been for potentially large solar facilities. None of them have come forward at this point in time, but had I been in a butter to one of those projects, I very much would have welcomed an opportunity for the planning board to be able to impose reasonable conditions of approval, such as putting in some vegetative screening or something to provide a buffer to protect as much of the town's character as possible in that area. So I think it's a, a good use of time. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. And we are trying to be proactive rather than before the barn door is totally gone. Question? George Murray, 14 Haywood Road, and I applaud you for that. Just for clarification, though, if someone has in their hip pocket a plan for 10 acres of solar panels, they wouldn't necessarily have come to you because we don't have this, right? They wouldn't have to come before. 
prior to this, correct. We would not, we would have come in and uh, planned. And that's why we need it. <laughs> okay, is there any further discussion? Emily. Hi, Emily. Emily Taylor, 9 Texas Road. You mentioned vegetative screening, Jeff, but on page 8, on uh, number uh, Roman numeral small I's, two I's, under D, it just says preserving natural vegetation, screening abutting properties in public ways. So they could put up like a 15 foot fence, hypothetically, if it's not vegetative screening, correct? They would they would have to review it by the board, and uh, we, might not, we might recommend that that's not a good idea. But do they have to take your recommendation? I mean, should we put vegetative screening, or not micromanage? I wouldn't micromanage. Okay. You're the boss. Question? Chris Sanders for Koala Bear Lane. I just wonder if there's potential for ambiguity or confusion on giving the equivalent power rating for 20,000 square feet. As cell uh, efficiencies get greater, later that might not be as much of an equivalent. And I don't know if there's some background or basis. No, I didn't base it off anything more than the available model ordinance language from the state. I would imagine if technology changes over time, that'd be an appropriate thing to do to re-examine it every so often and see if we need to make small changes to keep pace with technology. But right now, we, we have nothing, so we thought this was a good place to start. Would sticking with one or the other, either the power or the square footage, prevent us from having to come back and change it in I three years as the technology I think occurs. it's better to be broader and to have the range, both possibilities, so if it's not captured by one, it could be captured by another. So they could try to avoid site plan review by claiming that they don't fall under one particular category, but if they trigger either, then they're subject to site plan review. So if they were under 20,000 square feet, but over 125 kilowatt DC, they, that would, they would trigger this? That potentially could trigger that, yes, because, <laughs> what? I mean, wh shouldn't, should we be clearer? And it seems like there should be a very bright line of, are you, are you, do you fall under this or do you not? And I found that ambiguous. Well, if it's over 20,000 square feet, it definitely would qualify. The, it says nameplate capacity about 125 kilowatts or greater. So I would argue that if they trip either of those criterion, that they could be subject to some plan review. Bob Jeffries. Yeah. Does this include school roofs and other large <laughs> flat roofs? And if so, how do you apply screening and all of these other complications to it? If it's more than 20,000 square feet, technically it could. Okay. Gentlemen, question? I see a Richard Coleman, 23 Sandstone. I'm going to raise that same point that you just heard. Uh, when you are talking about 20,000 square feet, that always stays the same. But as the technology increases, that same space could generate a lot more, probably not less. So I think that that should be struck because you may have someone come in to you who is under the, uh, under the 20,000 square feet but can generate a whole lot more. If I may, Matt, moderator. Jeff? I, Good, yes. I believe with this language, if they generate that amount, or greater, regardless if it's a lesser area, that they would still be subject to site plan review. Or. Question? Matt Foster, 63 Buckwood Lane. What would be the problem with having more power uh, generated for a, a site that was under an amount of you know, square footage that we'd be concerned with? I don't, I, I think more power is better, so. So, would, so I heard someone say in the background safety, um, but I don't think that's a planning board issue, but uh, perhaps it is, I don't know. Okay. It is. Uh, safety in the town is part of our considerations. Thank you. Any further discussion? 
Okay. Let's, wait, uh, wait, wait, I have a question. <laughs> okay, Sharon Chu, 12 Robin Wood Circle. Okay, so I'm a little unclear. Does this apply to, um, let's say, school uh, roofs, flat roofs, or commercial buildings with flat roofs? I mean, would there be a prohi ro prohibition if that exceeded 20,000 square feet for solar panels on top of roofs, flat sure. roofs? of? If it were more than 20,000 square feet, it would require site plan review. So it, it would be prohibited under this it amendment? It would not be prohibited. It would just require that they come before the planning board for a limited site plan review on the, uh, for the considerations that are included in this article, such as screening. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Sashi, there's a gentleman. Okay, I'll, I need to recognize you. I recognize you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sashi Desik and Levin Pierce. Uh, Thank so you. is it 20,000 square feet of solar panels or is it 20,000 square feet of land? Okay. That is not as clearly specified here, but I would interpret it to the area that is used for that facility if the disturbance is 20,000 square feet. Or so, Council? The surface area. It is for the uh, panels and any structures, any uh, supportive structures that go with it. So it's not the land itself. It's the uh, anything that's so, built on so the land. To the previous person's point, if a daycare facility decides to put a series of panels on their roof, they would automatically qualify because a daycare facility is going to be more than an acre. They need a parking lot and whatnot. As long as the panels that they put on their roof are less than 20,000. Are less than 20,000 square feet. So it's the panel size. So the 20,000 square feet is the surface area of the panels. And any, and say they might have a building that goes form. with it. Yeah. yeah, okay. So can we amend that to clarify, just to ensure that like the, the size of the land doesn't trip the review? I don't think that's necessary. I appreciate the thought. But if you, if you look also, part of this, uh, this amendment, <laughs> does state that you can put them in a residential A where you have a minimum lot size of an acre. Uh, it prohibits it in business and also in residential B, which, or residential B, which have small lot sizes. Um, residential A, it's a special permit process. And then uh, there are other ones, the uh, commercial and uh, industrial, where they're allowed with just basic site plan review. So those are all large, so it's automatic that this property size is more than 20,000 square feet. Okay, any, any more discussion? Okay, move to end discussion. Okay, all in favor, take a vote. All in favor of um, ending discussion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Now, Article 13, we're going to vote on Article 13. A yes vote means you're in favor of amending Section 9.4, Site Plan Review, Section 10.2, General Definitions and Appendix A, to include a limited site plan review for solar fields and large fields, large solar facilities. A no vote means you oppose amending Section 9.4, Site Plan Review, Section 10.2, General Definitions and Appendix A, to include a limited site plan review for solar fields and large solar facilities. Okay, so you know what the questions? We need a two-thirds majority. All those in favor? That's Aye. enough. All opposed? No. Yes. Okay, it passes, but not unanimously. Okay, then I have the results from the secret ballot from Article 11. So this needed to pass with a two-thirds majority. Point of order. Our price draft number. I think we need to take off the table. 
Not yet. Sometime. I'll do it after I talk about this, okay? <laughs> article 12 is on the table. This is Article 11 that, we, that you just voted on with, the little, with your um, magical pink ballots. And so I'm going to um, let you know that uh, we needed uh, 240 votes to make it pass. Uh, we had 300 votes, and the, the vote passes the two-thirds majority. Oh, there were 62 opposed. There were a total of 362 votes. So, so now we need, now Bob, if you'd like to, okay, to, to bring back the motion, we can bring back the motion of Article 12 that we, that we uh, tabled, so it can be discussed and acted upon. Um, is there a motion to take this uh, Article 12? Second? Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay. So now that this, so now um, who will speak to Article 12? No. Okay. Okay, Madam Moderator, given the, uh, that both Articles 10 and 11 passed, the Planning Board moves that Article 12 be discussed. Okay. I'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, passes. No, not yet, please. So close. Two more. Two more. We're on Article 14. There's two more, Article 14 and Article 15. Article 14. Point of order. Point of order. 14 came the road. Someone made a motion to adjourn. We can't just shut them down. The motion to adjourn has to be voted on. It wasn't recognized. It wasn't called for They didn't a come up to the microphone. Zoning bylaw amendments, Article 14, amend section 3.1 to allow for multiple principal uses on a single lot in the commercial highway and industrial highway zoning districts, and amend section 10.2 definitions. I have a motion under Article 14 as printed in the motion sheet. Is there a second? Thank you. This has to be, this has to be passed with a two-thirds majority. Kate Hollister, would you be so kind? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, Section 3.1 of our zoning bylaw states there can only be one principal use on a lot, and the principal use means that's the main thing that's done there, uh, unless otherwise indicated in another part of our zoning bylaws. Section 9.3 states that multiple buildings are allowed for major commercial projects and major retail projects, and it has always been the planning board's presumption that because we allow multiple buildings, for major retail and commercial projects, if that means we allow multiple principal uses. So like all of our uh, shopping malls here, we have all these little businesses, each one is its own principal use, so we have multiple principal uses in all of our commercial areas here. Well, lo and behold, a few years ago, it was pointed out to us that we do not explicitly state in our zoning bylaws that we allow multiple principal uses in, uh, in our town. So we, this purpose of this zoning bylaw amendment is to correct this, uh, and it is only for commercial highway and industrial highway areas in town. I don't know if you want to put up the map or not, but these are the areas that are basically along Route 110, and that the air, uh, businesses, I mean, uh, uh, lots that currently do have principal, multiple principal uses on it. So we're just trying to clarify this, avoid confusion that has arisen because of this uh, uh, pointing out that we can't do it. Um, right now, the owners don't know what to do if one business leaves and another one comes in that's a different type of use. What do they have to do? Do they have to go before the CPA and get a variance? Um, so it is a lot of confusion. 
As I said, this proposed bylaw is only for an industrial highway and commercial highway along Route 110 and uh, also in the area where it's like uh, between 110 and Powers Road, the Nardone, and, and where Net Scout is. Do you need a laser pen? Yeah, what kind of, uh, I don't know if nobody's colored one. The laser pointer is not working. Yes, push it, push it again. There, there. That color there is commercial highway. The red color is industrial highway. This is the only part of town that has those two zoning districts. So that, that's, this is the only part of town where this bylaw would apply. It does not apply to industrial A, B, C, and D, which are located in other parts of the town, such as Groton Road. So it does not apply to residential, it does not to business zones. And uh, so what this article does, it corrects the language in uh, section 3.1 to make it, make it explicit that uh, multiple use, principal uses are allowed in uh, commercial highway and industrial highway. And based on that, it uh, modifies some uh, definitions to say that multiple uses are allowed in uh, commercial and industrial highway. Any discussion? Sorry, planning board uh, voted unanimously to recommend this amendment. Uh, by, yeah. Question? Lisa Nakash in Holzberg, Betty Lane. I do have a question. If I were one of these businesses that wanted to have an additional use, for example, a strip club or something like that, is there not some path forward for me to already pursue through a ZBA variance or a special use permit? This would only apply to uses that are allowed by right in our table of uses in the bylaw. Anything else would have to go before CBA. No, I understand. I guess what I'm asking is, why are we making it so much easier? I want businesses to go through permits so that residents have more opportunities to speak up, so that residents have more opportunities to be part of the process, review it, be heard, and if it means a business has to go in front of a ZBA first and then a planning board, so be it. Big deal. I mean, I'm, I'm still really reeling, as are many in this town, over how an asphalt plant could come in after every board voted no, and we spent $500,000, which we eventually got back, to keep it out. So my question is, why would we, why would we make it easier for uncontrolled growth to come in instead of requiring more thorough permitting? This doesn't allow uncontrolled growth. This allows what is a common practice in, a, in a, like a commercial area. You're gonna have to say to somebody, you can build your shopping mall, but we're not gonna let anybody put a you business can, there. But all they have to do is get a variance or a permit for it. What's the big deal? I, I guess what I'm saying is it seems like we keep coming back to taxpayers for more money when things go wrong. And yet, we're just putting the red carpet out for more growth and more growth. And you know what, maybe it's just about revenue. Is that what it's about? Is it about just pushing for more revenue? It's not about that. I, I appreciate that you are sensitive, but. Um, so I guess I'm trying to understand what we're solving because any business that wants to do this now can walk down the path of getting the proper permits and variances. Can they not? That's the question. Council, or did you want to? Did you want to? Chris Clutchman, please. I'll take a stab at this. Um, mixed use, which is what we're talking about, is actually the built character of uh, Route 110, um, where Whole Foods is, uh, where Cornerstone Square is. Um, mixing uses together on single lots is one of the most efficient uses of land, and I would argue, um, as a planning practice, is a best practice to prohibit sprawl and um, growth uh, that is not compact. So this actually does make efficient use of land instead of basically pushing uses to be just a 
single use, a bank on this lot, a restaurant on this lot. Um, why not have a bank and a restaurant on the same lot? But it didn't answer the question, I'm sorry. But my question, let me restate it, is I think this is granting rights where rights don't exist now, and I'm trying to understand if we want the development that's proposed, there's nothing prohibiting us from allowing it, is there? If as I long may, as Madam Moderator, buy. so you're asking, I think you're asking why not just rely upon the variance provisions? Correct, okay. yes, thank so you. So I would actually strongly recommend against that because although certainly the, the ZBA could grant the variance, um, those are going to be highly susceptible to legal challenges mm -hmm. because it is very, very difficult to meet variance standards. So it may be a project that everyone is, in town is very happy with. The ZBA grants the variance. If someone were to sue and appeal that, the chances of that variance being withheld are extremely low. So if an aggrieved neighbor sued? Exactly, withstanding. So having a bylaw provision that allows this by special permit, um, I think is a much sounder way to go if, if your ultimate goal is to retain local control. I guess in the opposite, I've seen neighbor after neighbor bought off, so I'd rather have an agreed neighbor be able to act, but thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Point of order. Point of order. Do we still have quorum? We don't, we need, don't it. need it. Okay. Question in the middle. Uh, yes, Deidre Sullivan, Betty Lane. I just have a question. How much of the um, zones that we're talking about are already developed? Chris, thank you. I think for those of us that are, this is a good question. For those of us that are familiar with Route 110, um, most much of it is developed, but there still is developable parcels, and there also is redevelopment. So you can see parcels, for example, um, Orchard Square, which is a development that took the old Tiki Lao and the mini golf. Um, that was a redevelopment. It actually was approved with a major commercial project, and it has multiple uses. Um, and uh, so that's an example of a redevelopment. So that uh, we do expect that redevelopment of parcels in the CH um, and IH areas will continue. Thank you, Chris. Marilyn? Marilyn Frank, 6 Chamberlain Road. I'm not opposed. I just came to this mic because I'm old. Uh, I just want to move the question, Madam Moderator. Thank I'd you. I'd like to make a motion to move the question. Second, okay. All in favor of ending discussion? Say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. So let's, um, let's vote on Article 14. A yes vote means you're in favor of amending Section 3.1 to allow for multiple principal uses on a single lot on the commercial highway and industrial highway zoning districts and amend section 10.2 definitions. A no vote means you oppose amending section 3.1 to allow for multiple principal uses on a single lot in the commercial highway and in industrial hi highway zoning districts and amend section 10.2 definitions. All in favor, we need a two thirds majority. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, passes but not unanimously. Okay. Madam Moderator, I have a point of information. Yes. Um, to the gentleman who just asked whether or not we need quorum, um, uh, just as a further explanation, um, we need quorum to start a special town meeting, and quorum is 200 people. Once we start that special town meeting, um, years of this body voted that we did not need to maintain quorum to continue with town meetings. So I just wanted to give the gentleman the explanation. Thank you very much, Andrea. Okay, Article 15, our final, our final article. Care and custody of town land. Article 15, transfer custody of a parcel on Acton Road from the Tax Possession Sales Committee to the Conservation Commission. I have a motion under Article 15 as printed in the motion sheets. Is there a second? Thank you. Don? Don Costley, we're going to come up and say anything or any discussion? You want to just, there, thank you. Don Costley, Chairman of the Tax Possession Sales Committee. Very quickly, this is a parcel of wetlands on the south side of Acton Road on the Chelmsford line, adjacent to a much bigger parcel of Chelmsford Conservation Land.
turn? Okay, I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much and have a great evening.